Hey everyone, I just finished making a bunch of sound panels like these two behind me. If you've ever tried to record videos or voiceovers or make music in a room that has a lot of echo, you know the pain that it can cause and how bad it can make the video sound. If you don't want your audio to sound amateurish, then getting rid of reverb or echo in the room is super important. You can do this by making some DIY sound absorbing panels. The first step is to choose a core material that you're gonna put inside the panel, and it's this core material that's actually going to absorb the sounds in the room and reduce the echo. Traditionally, sound panels have often been filled with mineral wool or fiberglass or rock wool kind of fillings. There's a few downsides to using this kind of filling, however. First off, it's very itchy if you come into contact with it with your skin, and it can be quite unpleasant to work with. You need to make sure you're fully covered up with personal protective equipment like glasses, masks, and make sure all of your arms are covered and use gloves and that kind of thing. Another thing to think about with these kind of materials is that they're often made with formaldehyde or other volatile organic compounds. If you're spending a lot of time in in the space where you're going to be putting these sound panels is something you might want to think about especially if you're not ever going to have any windows open. The reason is sometimes these kind of fillings can off gas or release gases into the air. There are some versions of mineral wool which have lower amounts of formaldehyde for example so you could possibly look into those. Another thing about using these kind of traditional sound panel fillings is that if you're using a very open weave fabric or you're not going to be covering both sides there's a potential for some of those glass fibers to get into the air and potentially you may breathe them in. We'll talk about the materials to cover these sound panels in just a second. As an alternative to these more traditional fillings for sound panel cores, I chose to go with thermally bonded polyester. Polyester is something that's often used in clothing or bed sheets and that kind of thing. Because it's stuck together and bonded together using heat and not glues which potentially contained formaldehyde, it's one less thing to worry about if you're going to be spending a lot of time in the space. Another advantage of this thermally bonded polyester style filling is that you can touch it and use it without needing to wear gloves. I did end up wearing a mask when I was actually cutting it just because I don't want to be exposed to any dust. But if you do touch it with your hands or your bare skin, it's not going to itch like fiber glass does. The next step is to make a frame to hold that panel core in place. Because we're going to be covering the panel with fabric, the actual wood that you choose for the panel frame doesn't really matter because you won't really be able to see it. It just needs to be strong enough to support the weight of the material that you're going to use. You also need to choose a width or a depth of the wood so it will accommodate the width of the core filling material. So I went and made a very simple box frame construction. I didn't use any fancy mitre joints. I literally just stuck four pieces of wood together with with glue and with screws. I did countersink the holes for the screws so that they wouldn't stick out and potentially snag the material. The frames that I made used untreated pine were 19 millimeters thick by 64 millimeters deep. Rather than go with square ones, I decided to make more rectangular ones so that I could hang them on the wall. And because I've got high ceilings, it will cover more of that bottom to top area of the wall. If you've got lower ceilings, you could get away with just making square panels. All you need to do is think about the dimensions of whatever core material you choose to use. Once you've assembled the frames you just need to wait for any glue to fully dry before moving on to the next step and you may also potentially want to consider adding cross braces if you're making a big frame or you want the frame to be super sturdy I didn't bother for these particular frames by the way if this is your first time here I'm Jason welcome this channel is all about making better looking better sounding and better edited video if that's something you're interested in consider subscribing I'd really appreciate it so step three is to choose the fabric that you're gonna wrap around or cover the frame and the core material with there's three things you need to think about when choosing a covering material. The first thing is acoustic transparency. The second thing is appearance or color. And the third thing is price. You can get specially made acoustically transparent fabric, which lets a lot of the sound through it and into the sound absorbing panel, something such as Guildford of Maine. However, these specialist fabrics can be quite expensive. If you don't want to spend that money on really expensive acoustically transparent fabric, then you can choose other fabrics from your local spotlight or other store. And there's a couple of ways you can can kind of get a feel for if they're going to be acoustically transparent enough. The first is to hold the fabric up to the light and if you get a little bit of light coming through that's a good indication that it might let sound through better and a better way is to actually hold the fabric up to your mouth and then blow out or breathe out through it. The easier it is to breathe air through the fabric, the more likely it is to be acoustically transparent and let sound into the actual sound panel to be absorbed. Burlap or Hessian is a very open weave fabric that lets a lot of air through when you breathe through it. So subsequently lets a lot of sound wave through into the panel. It's quite open weave, so you're probably gonna see the wood and also the sound panel core if you use it. And in my personal opinion, it doesn't actually look very good. I had to use two layers of burlap just so I could 
couldn't see the sound panel inside. And obviously if you're adding multiple layers, it's gonna reduce the sound transmission through the fabric. Also because burlap or hessian is quite open weave, there's a greater potential for fibers from the core filling to make their way out into the air. So that may or may not be an issue for you depending on the core material that you've chosen. So burlap may be a good choice for you, especially if you're not really concerned about the appearance of the sound panels. Because these sound panels are actually gonna be used in a YouTube studio and they're gonna be on camera and seen as part of the video, I kind of had to weigh up the sound transparency with the visual appearance. But that might not be something you need to worry about. The material that I ended up choosing to cover these sound panels in is an 80% polyester, 20% cotton mix called polyester poplin or polypop in spotlight. When I did the breath test on it, it did allow air through it, but obviously not as much as the open weave burlap did. Another advantage of this kind of fabric over burlap is it's a lot less rough to work with and it's just generally nicer and a bit easier to stretch around the sound panels without it tearing or getting ladders or runs in it. Step four is to actually assemble the sound panels. I highly recommend you measure everything twice as I did make a couple of little mistakes with the measuring and cutting. Like any carpenter will tell you, measure twice, cut once. So once you've got your core material cut so it will fit nicely inside your frame and you've also cut your material, you can get to work. You may want to consider washing and ironing the fabric first before you go ahead and wrap it around the sound panel. It might get rid of that kind of new material smell and just make it look a bit better. This will of course depend on the fabric that you've chosen. Some fabrics may not wash very well. So to assemble these, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is lay out the piece of material on a flat floor and then go and place the frame on top of it. You can then start to staple the material to the frame. What I did was to staple from the middle of the frame and then move to both corners from that middle point. This helped me just to keep the fabric a bit straighter and a bit flatter on the sides. Then I went over to the opposite side, but before I put that first staple in, I pulled the fabric and stretched it a little bit and wrapped it around the side of the frame before stapling. I then worked my way again from the middle to both corners, each time just stretching the fabric so it forms a nice tight stretched flat fabric on the front. So basically you're not going to end up with wrinkles or the front of the fabric sound panel flopping out all over the place. So I did try my hardest to get no wrinkles on the sides or the panels. It does take a little bit of practice and it took me a couple to kind of get into the routine. The good thing is you can always take the material off and then recover them if you mess it up. One tricky thing is actually to get the corners of the sound panels looking nice. What I did is I ended up cutting a line at the corner of the material and then folding one piece around and under and then folding the other piece of the material from the cut up and over and around the back to form a little join line right on the corner of the frame. You can then finish stapling up the corners and any other bits that need some extra staples and then just lay your sound absorbing core material inside the frame. Because I'm not working with a core material that I'm worried about the fibers getting out into the air, it's only polyester after all, I didn't bother covering the back of the frames and because these frames are going to sit up against the wall, I'm not really concerned about the core material kind of just falling out randomly. If you are concerned about these things, you could add a material backing on the back or put some bracing in the back over the top of the core sound absorbing material just to hold everything in place. The final step is to actually work out how to hang the panel on the wall. There's loads of different options that you can choose from here. Just as a quick disclaimer, make sure whatever method you choose to hang these panels on the walls or ceilings, that it's gonna be super firm, super secure, super tight, so it's not accidentally gonna fall on somebody and hurt them, or accidentally fall and damage some equipment. What I didn't want to have to do to hang these sound panels is to actually drill into the wall, because at some point I'm gonna to have to leave this space and move to another studio, for example. What I did find, however, is these really interesting, really handy claw hangers from 3M. These are drywall picture hangers. They come in different strengths or different hanging capabilities. The ones I choose were rated up to 45 pounds or 20 kilograms. I did weigh these sound panels to check what they came in and they came in at roughly 8.5 kilograms. So well within that 20 kilogram maximum hanging capacity. What I did is I worked out a plan to try and distribute the panels equally over the wall space. I did this using a drawing program called Inkscape, which is free. I just used the dimensions of the wall as the pixels for the document and then drew the sound panels to scale and then used the distribute evenly function just to distribute them. Then I could check what millimeters I needed to have from the edge in between each panel. So these 3M claw hooks simply push into the drywall or plasterboard with your thumbs 
I attached some screw-in hook eyes and then attached some braided picture hanging wire that's rated up to 15 kilograms. So once again, within that hanging capacity for the 8.5 kilogram panels that I made. Then with just a bit of trial and error, managed to put the sound panels in such a way as the picture wire hooked into the 3M claw hooks and then used the spirit level to try and get the panels level. These sound panels are just part of the overall build out of this new studio space I moved into. If you want to see the journey from beginning to end, check out this playlist. I'm Jason Roberts and I hope to see you in the next video.